Now that is how you end NXT TakeOver. Holy shit, what's up YouTube? It's your boy, Nash here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to be revealing the result of NXT TakeOver 36. Crazy card. If you, guys, guys, if you thought SummerSlam last night was good, bro, you haven't seen, you had not seen anything yet. The night kicks off. Actually, before we get started, if you guys want to see more TakeOver and pay-per-view prediction vid um, sorry, pay-per-view predictions and results in the future, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you, so you guys don't miss out on any on any of the new content that comes out. Check me out on Twitter and Instagram. Links are down below. And... And on that, let's get straight into it. First up, the pre-show where we where we saw Rich Holland go up against Trey Baxter, who was a who was a part of the 2021 NXT Breakout Tournament. Unfortunately, I believe he got he made it to the semifinals only to lose to I believe Odyssey Jones, um, <clears throat> which was which was a crazy matchup by by the way. This match it it was. It was a squash match. I'm 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 just I'm just gonna be real. It was it was a squash match. Rich Holland defeated Baxter um, with with a very powerful move, and then calls out Timothy Thatcher, saying that you haven't seen anything yet. Um, I can't say that I'm that I'm surprised about that, but that's done. The main card, the. The Million Dollar Championship, arguably one of the most expensive titles in all of WWE. Back in the day, the title costed more than $40,000 to to make, to build. Now, it's worth three times that amount. It is, it's literally worth about $120,000, $130,000. It may even go up 10 years from now. It is very possible. LA Knight, the champion. Cameron Grimes, the challenger, the final chapter in the saga for, as, 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 as far as we know anyway, of course. With, with the stipulation that, with the stipulation that if Cameron Grimes wins the title, let me, sorry guys, I had to, I had to adjust my desk here a little bit, but the stipulation was, if Cameron Grimes wins, he becomes the champion. If LA Knight wins, then he, then Ted DiBiase... would become LA Knight's butler instead of Cameron Grimes. A crazy match, hell, hell of a crazy match, with the referee distracted, the closing moments of the match, match with the referee distracted, Ted DiBiase, the Hall of Famer, applied the million dollar dream onto LA Knight and then punched him in the face. Threw him back into the ring, Cameron Grimes hits the cave-in, on LA Knight, one, two, three, GG, no re. Cameron Grimes is now the million dollar champion. They ended up partying apparently at the end of the show, and you know, you know, Cameron Grimes is going to the moon. Um, next up, we have a match that was based on jealousy and and. Being overshadowed, if you will, as Dakota Kai challenged Raquel Gonzalez for the NXT Women's Title, I have to admit, this was a very this was a heart a heartbreaking match to watch because of the fact that Dakota Kai was the one that brought Raquel Gonzalez back into NXT. Because if you guys remember, Raquel Gonzalez was a part of the first and the second ever Mania Classics, and then she had teamed up with Rhea Ripley beforehand and then she went she she went away for a while and because of Dakota Kai Raquel Gonzalez came back to NXT and she's been dominant ever since but because of the fact that Io Shirai took actually chose Ra Raquel Gonzalez as Io's challenger for said title back at stand back at takeover stand stand and deliver you can't be surprised about that you lit literally literally you can't be surprised about that. 
but of course this was a very fast paced matchup, hard hitting, but the closing moments of the match, Ra Raquel Gonzalez hit Dakota Kai with the, Shing with the, she calls it the Shingona Bomb, which I'm actually going to look it up online, I don't remember what, I think I talked about it before, okay seriously, there, come on, I swear my laptop is being stupid. Let me look up the term Shingona. If I remember correctly, there was a term for it. But I don't remember the term. Let's see. Shingona. Oh, I feel a load, of course. So the term Shingona me is 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 actually a is actually and I'm and I'm actually looking it up online. It's actually um it's actually a Spanish term meaning badass woman. Um which that's actually kind of that's that pretty much sums up who Raquel Gonzalez is. She is indeed a Shingona. She is a bad Ass woman, she is badass, and she proved it tonight by hitting the Shingona bomb from the top rope, mind you, on Dakota Kai to retain the the NXT Women's Title. But at the end of it all, we got to see the return of Kaylee Ray. If you guys remember, at Takeover War Games back in 2019, Kaylee Ray was a went went to NXT in in Orlando. To be a part of Team Baszler for for War Games, and it was insane. It was insane. Hang on, guys. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. One of my friends is is texting me. I don't know why he, he texted me at the wrong time. There we go. Anyway, yes. Anyway, yes. So, Kaylee Ray decided to show up that night to announce that she would take part in that, in that team, Team Baszler, for War Games. And that was the only time we saw her, other than, other than I think, in 2020, if, if I remember correctly. But... When she lost her title to Mako to Mako Sonomura just a couple just a couple of months ago on on NXT UK, she came to NXT and targeted Raquel Gonzalez, proving meaning we might see a new challenger in Kaylee Ray. Is it possible? Absolutely. But only time will tell. Only time will tell as to whether or not this this that match will take place. If it does, I am all for it. I am all for it. And I have to admit, I have to admit, Dakota Kai brought the fight tonight. She brought the fight to Raquel Gonzalez. But as I said moments ago, Raquel Gonzalez hit Dakota Kai with the Shingona bomb to retain the women's title. Congrats to her. Next up, holy shit. If you guys thought that October 20th, 2020, if you guys thought that match was impressive, this one took the fucking cake, and it probably ate, ate it. Probably ate it too, of course. <laughs> anyway, Ilya Dragunov, Walter, two for the NXT United Kingdom Championship, a match ten months in the making. This is kind of unique because this was unique because I talked about it in my prediction video on Thursday, where. Where I said that this was a must, I believe I said that this was a that this was a must win, that this was a must win win situation for Dragunov because if he wins, now he would go down in history as the only man to pin Walter or make him submit, which would give which would put a blemish on Walter's record. But if Walter wins, 
he would just be able he he would be able to continue his reign as champion and it would not stop. This match was the pu- was the purest definition of violence and I and I literally mean that. I legitimately mean that. Dragonov, Walter <laughs> chop after chop, slap after slap, punch after punch. It was insane. Absolutely in Insane. Literally. Insane. And my brother just texted me. Literally. Hang on, guys. There we go. Anyway, yeah. This match, absolutely insane. Purest form of violence. But at the closing moments of the match, the last few minutes of the match, Dragunov did not quit. No matter how many times Walter had him, Dragunov did not quit. Never. And the closing moments of the match, Dragunov hit, had applied a sleeper, a devastating sleeper, to the point where it would, it would damn near choke out Walter. And he did it. We, we saw it happen. Walter fucking tapped out. He tapped out. Let understand this, okay? Walter had became the NXT United Kingdom champion at I believe yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I believe so. At NXT Takeover New York in 2019, ending Ending Pete Dunne's 685-day reign as NXT UK champion, Walter has had been champion for 870 days. That is, I believe, what two years? Two years. That is over. That is literally over two years. Insane, insane. And Walter had beaten the best in the business. He had beaten guys like Tommaso Ciampa. He had beaten. He had beaten Rampage Brown. Joe Coffey. He had beaten Ilya Dragunov. And Ilya Dragunov ended that reign. I'm in shock. I'm in utter complete shock. You want to talk about a shock to the system? No pun intended. That right there was the ultimate shock to the system. But speaking of shocking the system, we move on to the match that we never thought we would ever see again. Cole O'Reilly 3, the undisputed finale. Two out of three falls. The first fall was handpicked by Kyle O'Reilly. Second fall was picked by Adam Cole. The last fall, if necessary, was handpicked by William Regal, the NXT GM. Kyle O'Reilly had chose a straight up wrestling match. Pin, pin, pin fall or tap out, plain and simple. Adam Cole chose a street fight. William Regal chose a steel cage. The first fall. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly had had picked up the fall just from out of nowhere. Second fall, Adam Cole picks picks up the fall because and and also Kyle O'Reilly had his ribs broken from the ring apron that that allowed Adam Cole to pick. The ribs as his target, if you will, and he would just, he went off on on Kyle O'Reilly, but the third fall, absolutely insane. Cole beat the living hell out of Kyle O'Reilly outside of the ring and inside the ring when the like, steel cage was coming down. That allowed Adam Cole to keep that that allowed Adam Cole to continually just punish Adam Kyle O'Reilly, and the closing moments of the match is is actually gonna it's actually gonna make you say what the fuck just happened here's the thing if you would think that the way it ended never should have ended but it did adam cole had handcuffed kyle o'reilly to the ring to to the top ring rope And just when Adam Cole, Cole was about to hit a big move with his foot, with a boot, 
Kyle O'Reilly grabbed the foot and applied a heel hook on Adam Cole with one arm hooked onto the heel hook and one arm handcuffed. And Adam Cole tapped out. Adam Cole tapped out. Thus, the undisputed, er the undisputed finale is done and as is the legacy of the Undisputed Era. Now, you're probably thinking, what the fuck? Uh, Adam, Kyle O'Reilly sh sh shouldn't have won that. Yeah, you're right. You you guys are probably right. Kyle O'Reilly shouldn't have won that because he, he was handcuffed. But, there was nowhere for Cole to go. He, there was no weapons near him. There was no nowhere to run. And it's a steel cage. So not even a rope break would be able to stop Kyle O'Reilly. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so now, so now this ba this begs the question: What's next for for Adam Cole? Well, I've heard. Well, as you guys remember, I heard I I had talked about it uh, over the last over the last couple of weeks that Adam Cole's contract had expired, but he had signed an extension to compete tonight at, at Takeover Thirty Six. However, I've heard I, I've I've heard even more rumors online that. Apparently, Adam Cole has re-signed with NXT for another term, but I don't. But I, I don't know how long. I will talk about it in depth once I have more more info. I will I will talk about that in a future WWE news video, which obviously those videos get posted every Thursday. If you guys want to check them out. But with that being said, it is now time for the main event, a match that. Is insane. Samoa Joe carrying Cross for the NXT title. Samoa Joe became the first ever two-time NXT champion in history. Carrying carrying Cross became the last two-time NXT champion ever. And this match was as hard-hitting as it can get. Samoa Joe was almost passed had almost passed out. Looked like he was about to. Suffer, suffer more concussions because if you guys remember, throughout 2019, you know, th you know, throughout the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020, he had suffered through, he had suffered from multiple concussions from his rivalry with Seth Rollins. You know, you know when Rollins had Murphy and AOP and Joe had had the Viking Raiders and of course Kevin Owens backing him up. So when that was going on, Joe had had suffered through multiple concussions, which not only put him on on the shelf for months, but he was also doing commentary throughout his time away from the ring. So the big question w was was this: Would ring rust come to play? No, it did not because at the close because the closing moments of the match, Samoa Joe hit Karrion Cross with a muscle buster. I never thought I would ever see that. Because I remember watching Joe hit his opponents with a muscle buster from his days in TNA back in the day. And he did it. He hit Samoa, he hit Karrion Cross with the with the muscle buster, and he made history by becoming the only three-time NXT champion in history. I don't think any other man will be able to stake claim to that. It is almost now almost impossible. Which is insane. Now the question remains, what's next for Karrion Cross? Obviously now, tomorrow night on Raw, he goes to the main roster. It's done. It's done. Will Karrion Cross come 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 back to NXT? It is it is possible, but it's not likely. Then again, Regal might fight Meg fire Karrion Cross. Who the hell knows? Only time will tell. But yes, we had we actually had a total of one, two. Three title changes throughout the whole card. Hell of a crazy card. That brings me to the question of the night. I, I would say question of the day, but at the time that I'm recording this, uh, which is which will be the same day I'm posting it, it is actually almost eight right now. So, so that brings me to the question of the night. What are you, what were you guys' thoughts on this card tonight? And what do you, what do you think will happen on NXT moving forward post Takeover Thirty Six? That is that is the question of the day. Let me know in the comments below. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. It. If you did, 
Make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button if you guys are new to the channel and you guys want more, more pay-per-view slash takeover result videos in the foreseeable future. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys do not miss out on any new content that comes your way. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All the links will be down in the description below. And if you guys have family you want to send me and want me to open up on the channel, my address will also be in the description as well. And on that, this is your boy Nash, signing out.